Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Keith Silva. Visitors come to Vermont for all sorts of reasons. For some, it's the outdoor recreation, while others, it's the food. Today, we'll introduce you to someone who's here for the grass. The National Grazing Lands Coalition is sponsoring a bus tour they're calling Grazing Through the Green Mountains. The Grazing Lands Coalition is a nationwide nonprofit providing high quality technical assistance on privately owned grazing lands on a voluntary basis. The bus tour is a way to show and tell how grazers in Vermont run their farms and to share what they've learned about grazing. Not only cows, but sheep, goats, pigs, and chickens. Joining me is a familiar face for many Across the Fence viewers. Jen Colby operates Howling Wolf Farm in Randolph. When she's not wrangling her flock of sheep or hosting overnight stays on her, uh, in a yurt on her farm, she's chatting up farmers on the popular podcast, Choosing to Farm. Welcome back, Jen. Thanks, Keith. Great to see you. Next to Jen is Harvey Dunn, who hails from the United Kingdom, where he operates a cattle farm and sells the meat, and sells the meat directly to the customers. Welcome to both of you. Thank Harvey, you. I left out your uh, hometown out of my introduction because I know everyone would rather have you say it than hear <laughs> me say it. So where is the farm located, Harvey? Well, we're Crossroads Farm and we're in Buckinghamshire. Um, that's quite central in England. About, we, uh, you said about an hour's ride north of? Of London, yeah. Of London, yeah. If okay. we want to go to London, we can, we can be back in a day. <laughs> and I, I usually do want to be back in a day. <laughs> <laughs> back in a day. Um, so we were saying Jen's farm is in Randolph about an hour from Burlington, where we are here at WCAX. So, um, you know, when next time we're driving Burlington to Randolph, think, mm. oh, it's like going to Buckinghamshire. It's like <laughs> going home, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, before we get too far down the road, speaking of roads, um, why do you graze, Harvey? For us, we're very lucky in the United Kingdom with our climate. It lends itself to growing grass. The, the season's almost year round, really, unless it gets very cold in the winter. So for us, grazing grass is the most efficient way of capturing energy and sunlight, turning that into grass year round and then producing beef off the grass. So really it's you know, to some extent a no-brainer. If we're growing grass and grazing it in a, in a well-managed way, then we're gonna get the returns in terms of, in terms of profit and of, in terms of benefit to our environment and our soil. So you're telling me all those uh, Dickensian movies I watched with snow on the <laughs> ground at winter and everyone really cold. Mm. Th th that's not really the way it is in, uh, in the <laughs> <laughs> Maybe recent years, no. <laughs> okay. Recent years, we've been very comfortable in the winter. Okay. <laughs> um, what have you learned so far about grazing the Green Mountains? Uh, well, I'm learning you guys have a, have a very scenic area and I'm, uh, I'm enjoying taking some photos to send, send back to my family. Um, I'm also learning you guys have had a wet summer and uh, some, some people I've met are more happy about that than others. Mm -hmm. uh, but it seems telling of, of climate change, unfortunately, and uh, the, the, the strange weather you guys have had in the past year, it's, I think it's changing. So I'm learning that the farmers that we've seen this week are really having to adapt to that and uh, are willing to change their business in order to, to cope in the coming years. Mm. And uh, how is that in the UK? Are you having the same sort of weather, maybe not the same weather, but the same sort of uh, trying to prepare for a changing climate? Yeah, I think we are. It's, uh, it's slow changes, but I think the sad thing is that if without change, I think people will get left behind. So mm -hmm. either by uh, voluntary change or by getting forced to in the end, pe people are going to change their practices. But regardless of what method, I think it will be for the benefit of our food system and our country and our farmers in the long run. Mm. Jen, talk about the sponsor for yep. the tour, the National Grazing Lands Coalition. Uh, how do you work with them? Uh, yes, yeah, so I, when I was with University of Vermont Extension, um, I went to the National Grazing Conference several times. Um, the National Grazing Coalition uh, is the organizer of that. Mm. They do grazing programming all across the country. Um, they had great conferences, and last year I uh, joined their board as a as a regional advisor for the Northeast. So I have had the, the great fortune of being one of the local hosts for that and helping to work with the farms and be a local liaison um, and also begin to get some of the Northeastern farmers connected to more of the Western farmers and ranchers. We were talking about the organization, how they offer technical assistance about grazing and basically everything I know about grazing and grazing cattle I've learned from you. Uh, it's not very complicated. Cows were built to, 
eat grass and graze. So what sort of technical assistance does an organization like this provide? Oh, goodness. Oh, great question. Uh, so, so yes, it is absolutely true that, that cows naturally do know how to eat grass. <laughs> it's true. That's how they evolved. Mm -hmm. But in nature, cows have predators that move them that keep them moving along to find fresh grass and let the existing grass be able to rest and recover. Mm. What we've sort of stepped away from in, in more modern farming ranching is a lot of overgrazing large places. And we've, we've talked about overgrazing before <laughs> right. um, and the, the downsides of that. And so helping farmers and ranchers uh, understand what the principles of good grazing are, mm -hmm. mimicking nature, and then also how to apply those. So what's very important about National Grazing Lands Coalition is they are working in all different parts of the country and the principles are the same about how to do this well, but they are applied differently depending if you have a brittle environment, if you have mm -hmm. a non-brittle environment like we have. It's all about how you apply. It's it's. It's not the cow, it's the how. <laughs> very good, I very stole good. That from someone else. Okay. <laughs> there was, there's also a sense that, um, you know, when you're putting cows out on grass, that's, you know, most folks, when we talk about grass, you're thinking about your lawn, um, but there's all sorts of grasses within the grass and making sure that, you know, it's a, it's a buffet rather than just single serve thing. So that's also a part of that technical assistance. Absolutely, that we're managing for a, a right. multi-culture, not a monoculture, a mm. polyculture, not a monoculture. You said you're uh, helping uh, with hosting of yeah. this bus tour and also uh, you're on the tour as well. And you're visiting farms that you have been to. Uh, these are friends of yours, people you've known for decades uh, probably. What have you, wh what, what can you learn? I mean, you know these people, they're friends of yours, you've visited their farms. What are you learning on this tour? Every single farm I have ever visited for any event that I've organized or attended, there's something to learn. And I take something away every single time. Um, we were visiting the Schwanier Dairy yesterday mm -hmm. and you know they've, they've been on a number of times. Yes. They're doing new things all the time. They are applying a new technology right now that they're testing. So there's always something to learn at every single farm. So that's just one of the things yesterday was, well, how is that working to do, mm -hmm. to do this new technology? And is that working in your system? And is it something you're going to do again? Mm. Um, and also yeah. seeing these farmers that you've known doing something new, that's very exciting. It's fantastic. And it's, and it's quite amazing to see the progression over time and the changes and um, it's amazing to look back and to see that there really right. has been progress on a lot of these farms um, in a lot of ways. Harvey, uh, uh, none other than the English poet William Blake coined the phrase that England is a green and pleasant land. <laughs> um, from what you've seen, could Blake be describing Vermont? Yeah, I think he could have been. As long as he visited in the summer, maybe, <laughs> and wasn't uh, snowed under in six foot of snow, then yeah, right, he right. could be here. Right. Um, do you see what sort of uh, similarities and differences do you see between Buckinghamshire and where you've been in Vermont? Um, a lot of the landscape is the same. We spoke about the grass and the principles being the same as you mentioned, Jen. Um, a noticeable difference is perhaps just how densely populated we are in England. Mm. On a more human level, it's changing the, the markets we have available and the farmers I've seen here in Vermont have available. Um, back home, I'm very lucky that wherever I am or whatever time of year, there's a market to sell to and usually a fair price to get from, for our product. Um, I'm inspired by some of the farmers we've seen, how willing they are to, uh, to change their product or change where they are to, to fit their market because they understand that if there's not people to sell to, they're, they're not going to make any money. Mm. And uh, in more of the rural areas, they're, they're having to change their supply chain a bit and maybe sell their product at the gate or to, uh, to another corporation, but they're willing to think about that and they're proud of the product they make. Do you have the same uh, in, in Vermont, and I know working with UVM Extension, there's a lot of interest of always, where does your food come from? Making sure people understand mm. it doesn't come from the supermarket, that it comes from a farm, that there's, there's many hands behind this yeah. doing this work. Do you have the same uh, sort of uh, thing going on in England or this sort of understanding where food comes from? Yeah, I think historically, or maybe not historically, but 
in recent history, maybe that's been lost, but I feel a, a real groundswell of movement now that uh, people rightly care about the food they're putting into their bodies and they, they should care about that and they should have the right to, to ask, where's this food come from? How is it produced? Right. You know, who's making it? And, uh, and as farmers, I am and I hope everybody should be really proud to be transparent and say, look, this is how we do it. This right. is what we're making and uh, we're proud of it. Uh, Jen, um, what, so, you know, you're on a bus, to Har you and Harvey are on a bus tour right now, <laughs> driving through Vermont. As we sort of drive through Vermont, maybe that hour back and forth from Burlington to Randolph, people see cows grazing in a field. Is it more than just a marketing tool for a company? What should we be thinking about when we're, when we're seeing a cow grazing that should register how for the average non-farm person? Absolutely. So I think that when uh, the, the average person looks out and sees cows in the field, they may think about it. They may not. They may just say that's, that's, just, that's a <laughs> lovely bucolic scene. Right. Um, but if they see a group of cows bunched together, that's not a bad thing. That's actually a good thing. Um, it means that the grazing is typically managed. Okay. If they see messy pastures, if they see you know, a little bit of overgrownness, that's not necessarily a bad thing. That actually is okay. a sign of good pasture management, can be. Um, and always the animals out on the landscape, when managed well, are making things better. And that's what we want. We want animals on the landscape so that they can improve water quality, improve soil health, all of, all of the things that we want. Well, it's, gonna, it's time for us to move on to other pastures. I want to thank uh, the crew here at WCAX for making this program possible. And as always, thank you for stopping by Across the Fence.